well, welcome everybody to our worship service for this week. I thought we'd do something a little bit differently this week. We decided we wanted to do a little worship at home this week. Since most of us are stuck at home, or at least spending more time at home than normal, we thought we would kind of focus on how do we worship uh, when we're at home? And what does that look like? Uh, thank you guys for joining us and hope you enjoy our time worshiping at home. Alright, welcome to the campfire. We're going to go around and share some things that we're thankful for, because that's a good thing to do around the campfire. Yes, Boone and we're laying. Micaiah, what are you thankful for today? Well, I'm thankful for that we are alive here and thankful for God that He came to save our souls. And I'm also thankful for family and friends that we're not alone. Mmm. Yeah. When we're spending all this time at home, it's really nice to have other people around, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It makes you thankful for because there's some people who are who don't have anyone to spend time with right now, you know. Yeah. And uh, even if we can't be together in person, it's nice to have these services we can share together online and be with each other that way. That's cool. Yeah. It's nice that we have each other. Yeah. What are you thankful for, Liam? The postcards that... Mm, we got in the mail? In the mail. Yeah. You got something from Mrs. Gammon lately. That was pretty cool. Yeah, isn't it cool that we've been able to get more stuff in the mail lately when we haven't been able to be together? Lots of people have been sending cards and letters and encouraging to just use in the mail. Well, That's kind of cool. Erebus, what are you thankful for? Um, I thank you for a circus. I have a little ass and a big ass. Elsa? Yeah. Oh, cool. Do you get to maybe watch the movie Frozen? Will that be fun? Yeah, I can see you ride it here. Woo, that will be cool. That's kind of nice to have some chance to watch some movies together. We can put the wooey up here and watch a wooey. Mm -hmm. What are you thankful for, Grace? I'm thankful that we can be outside. Yeah. I haven't been outside in a few days, so this is really nice. That's cool. Thankful for the warm weather that's soon to come. How about Bella? What are you thankful for, Bella? Mama? Ooh. Daddy? Oh! Well, I'm thankful for just the opportunities that we have right now just to have time. Uh, just to be able to uh, slow down, you know, uh, be able to go for a walk, be able to just relax more. Uh, the gift of time and how spending time with the family is valuable and I've just been reminded and kind of forced to stay home a little bit more but how valuable that time can be. And that's been kind of a blessing to rediscover. Kind of makes you think about how how you chose to use your time when you were free to do all kinds of things and how valuable it is to just rest and spend time relaxing, spend time with your family. So I've been thankful to get to experience that lately. It's been pretty cool. Alright, what's a good campfire song we could sing together? Kumbaya! Whoa. And what does Kumbaya mean? Come by here! Come by here. Walk to here! So we're kind of asking for God's presence when we sing that song, right? That's a good worship song. Alrighty, let's sing. Kumbaya, my Lord, kumbaya. Kumbaya, my Lord, kumbaya. 
Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya. worship in the Bible, I see that word worship and it's getting translated. And the most frequent word that is translated from in the original language is from Greek and the word proskuneo. And proskuneo tells us a lot because it is often translated into English uh, as it gives us words like prostrate, so lying face down on the ground, uh, the idea of bowing down in a very humble position. So the word worship and the concept of bowing down and showing your uh, humility towards a kingly figure, those are really connected at their root. They're both proskuneo. So when I say what is worship, I could also say what is bowing down? What does it mean to bow down? And there I can discover an answer for what does it mean to worship. If I were to go on a Sunday or my chosen day of worship into the presence of the King, of King Jesus, into his throne room, and I were to worship him, I bow down, I say, Jesus, you are the King, you are the Lord of my life, what you say I will submit to, I will do the things that you want me to do, you're the king of my life. And then if I were to proceed to leave the throne room and spend the rest of my week ignoring Jesus, um, not treating his word as being above my desires, if I put myself in the position of king and, and didn't respect him and his authority, what kind of worshiper would I have been on Sunday when I went and said those things in his presence. And so thinking about it that way really gets us to think about how the rest of our life is very important in our worship. What we do on Sunday when we proclaim things or remind ourselves of certain truths or the ways we want to live those only go so far into how we actually will live the rest of the week. And so worship can be lived out in our lives when we do the things that we said we would do, when we live in a way that shows that Christ is King in our lives, that we are not our own masters, but that we submit ourselves to His authority and do the things that He has asked us to do and say, yes, Jesus, you are the king of my life. In essence, worship is anything that recognizes that Jesus is king. And there's so many more ways that we can do that in our everyday life than in those occasions where we meet together on Sundays. So we just want to share with you guys some of our ideas for how do you recognize Jesus as King in everyday life? And for us, that will be mostly centered around our family and our kids. But you may not have kids. Uh, you may want to incorporate these principles more on the level of your spouse. You may not have a spouse. You may find that you can incorporate this more in your workplace with your coworkers. What does it look like to say Jesus is the King in our everyday life. 
How do the things that we do and the things that we say point to Jesus is the King of my life? That's what everyday worship is really all about. Ooh, hey look, I think we got a little bit going. Uh oh, look at Dangerous Bug. Yeah, that's okay. Let's see if we can get more over here going. See it. Yeah, it's starting. Can see it. You know what the Bible says about fire? No. God says in James that fire is kind of like our words. And how if we say bad things, it can start out really little, but what happens to fire pretty soon? Do. It goes out. It gets bigger though. See how it goes? And it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And so if we say bad things, fire is kind of like that. It just gets out of control and pretty soon our words can cause lots of damage. And it says that fire can burn down a whole forest if it starts out small but it gets bigger and bigger out of control. And so our words. Yeah. It's getting bigger. So what can happen if you say something mean to somebody? Bad things. Yeah. yeah. It can kind of grow and grow and pretty soon maybe you're not friends with that person or pretty soon maybe other people are upset and all kinds of stuff. And bad things can happen if we let our, if we're not careful with our words, just like if we're not careful with fire. All right, I think it's taking off. Should we scoot back? Yep. What you doing, Kaya? Well, I'm going up to see the chicken, and we are proud. We are going to be talking about them. As you can see, there is a fence. Taking care of chickens is a real hard responsibility, especially when they're young babies. chicken family and she is one of the most lightest and whitest chicken she is also my second favorite here we have the oldest their leader sky she is the afraid to get carried she doesn't like being picked up as the others. She is the oldest, her name is Sky, and she is pretty great as a leader. And then the last chicken, which is the second oldest, she is my favorite, her name is Curious. She, I think, is the most darkest chicken and the most beautiful and she is the one who mostly gets picked up and so every night they get put away and so these little creatures are quite hard to take care of so and those babies 
babies in our basement. They will be growing soon. I'd like to see you back on how to take care of chickens. So I noticed this morning that you, you woke me up with the noise of getting water for the chickens. That was cool. How come you were up so early getting, taking care of the chickens? Well, you know, the chickens get up earlier and my mom told me that before I have breakfast, I need to take care of them. So when I got up, I took care of them right away. Yeah, well, thanks for doing that. That was really cool that you were careful to do that so early. What do you think God thinks about doing things like that? Well, you know that we have to take care of other people and stuff instead of just ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I remember on a movie that you, you can use other things to help others and not just yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we make sure that other people have everything they need. Like we, we have everything mm -hmm. that we need, yeah. all our stuff. Yeah. But other people probably don't have everything that mm -hmm. they need. I'd like to see you later. Hello and welcome to the next thing about these fragile creatures. And so I shall show you here we have baby ones. Like I told you on the first video, we have baby ones in our basement. These are those little tiny chickens. They have food and water. A heat lamp, they have everything they need to grow strong. And they are quite young still. We've had them for like two and a half or three weeks so far. Probably a bit longer, but we had them for quite a while so far. And they are quite important too. They are quite an amazing kind of little creatures. They can well, lay eggs soon, not very soon, but they will start laying eggs sometime, just like our bigger ones. What do you have to do to take care of these? Well, for starters, we have to make sure they have clean water, no wood chips, food, and the most important thing is that they get lots of sleep. So, we have to be careful of what we are doing with these little baby ones. How often do you check on them? Oh, probably like twice a day or so. And they are such a blessing to us that we were able to take care of them, make sure they have everything they need, and that they will grow nice and strong as soon as they are big as these others. So we shall be taking care of these little creatures. So this king in the movie, he was telling his people to lie for him so he wouldn't get in trouble. Mm -hmm. Did it work? Mm -mm. So he pushed a button that released the moon from the orbit. Mm -hmm. And then he told everybody to lie for him so that he wouldn't get in trouble with the 
Federation. Ah. So do lies work? Did it work? That he didn't get in trouble? Mm, uh, uh No. Yeah, and there's this other guy and they're supposed to just like dark and their mother told them not to play with it because they were too young. Oh, yeah. But they did hit it and the poor thing broke. Oh. And then... Did they try to lie so that she wouldn't find out? Yeah! Oh man. Was it better when they lied or when they told the truth? When the truth they Did they feel better too? That's good. Does the Bible say anything about lying or telling the truth? So. You know what it says? Mm -mm. Mm. I'll have to watch the movie some more. Dad, I think you should watch the movie. Is there anything in the movie about Kevin. what does the Bible say Kevin. about lying? Yeah. Um, the first three commandments. Oh, we remember in the Ten Commandments. Yeah. What's one of the yeah. Ten Commandments? Never lie. Never lie. Okay. Yeah. Did you notice the grandma? She said something um, about lying. Lying will get any man into trouble, but honesty mm -hmm. is its own defense. Yeah. Do you know where that's from? Uh, I think that's no, from I Proverbs. Ah. Lying will get any man into trouble, but honesty is its own defense. And when you lie, it feels like... The whole world is on you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hey, you're not you're like you're carrying around a heavy weight. Yeah, uh, so carrying the world. Yeah. yeah. We'll read one more story about lying from our devotional book. I found this story. This is a famous story from Acts 5 about lying. So pay attention to see what it says about lies. Many came to believe in Jesus. They pulled together, sharing what they had. Some even sold their houses or lands so that the money could be used elsewhere, could be used where it was most needed. But not every new believer was honest. Ananias and his wife Sapphira sold part of their land. They decided that they would keep some of the money for themselves and give the rest to Peter, believing he would never know. But when Ananias brought the money, Peter looked him in the eye and said, Why have you lied and kept some back? The land was yours before you sold it, and the money was yours too. Why lie? You haven't just lied to me, but to God himself. Ananias fell down dead on the spot. When Ananias' wife, this is his wife right here, came in, Unaware, a bit later, Peter asked if she had given him all the money. When she answered yes, he sighed. Oh, Sapphira, how could you lie like that? Can't you hear that sound? As footsteps were heard outside the room. Those men have just buried your husband, and now they will carry your body away too. And at that, Sapphira fell down dead. Have we say, that's good. We can go on a gate or on the bridge. Hmm. <laughs> we can say that in the bridge. The story of the lying couple spread far and wide and filled everyone with fear and awe. <laughs> so what happened in that story about with the lying? They were dead since they lied. Yeah, they died because they lied. Isn't that crazy? Mm-hmm. <sighs> Do you think telling lies might lead to death? It could. And Peter said, You haven't just lied to me, but you have lied to who, Liam? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, said you've 
lied to God, um, do you think God cares about lying, Missy? Well, we should, we should say, that's a good idea. Does God like lying? No, mm -hmm. he, 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 he likes not lying. He not likes it. Yeah. Did you notice in the movie what the kids did after they lied? What did they do with their grandma after they lied? They told the truth. No. Like... Yeah, at the end. They told the truth and they said, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And then what did the grandma do? The grandma uh, forgave them. Yeah. That's a pretty good thing to remember. Hey, if we ever lie, hey, hey, Dad. we can say sorry. Kid. I won't do that again, I'm sorry. I say we are both sorry and mm -hmm. child of mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what the truth is. That's what the truth is. Micaiah, what are you coloring? Um, it's a picture from the Treasure Seekers. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, the hairless is coloring hers pink. What you're coloring is a soldier, and he has mm -hmm. on. What is he wearing? Um, uh, armor. Uh, armor. Yeah. I'm gonna read to you the story in the Bible that goes along with the picture that you're coloring. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Do you think that it would be bad to go into battle without having any armor on? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What would happen, Liam, if somebody went into battle and they weren't wearing their helmet? Mm -hmm. Their head could get hurt. It's important for us to know God's word so that we can be prepared for the things that happen. So you guys got to witness a few teaching moments with our kids and some other random things that just popped into everyday life that I tried to capture really quick. Uh, but one thing that I've noticed is that I'm really not that good yet at using those moments of opportunity and making the most of saying the right thing and getting them pointed in the right direction right away. Um, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, if you ever watched that show, he would ask one question and then it would go right from the surface issues to the very heart of the matter, like instantly. And I, I don't have that ability. I'm not very good at that yet, um, but I'm working on it. But one thing that I've noticed in just spending time asking my kids questions or um, several questions trying to get to then to experience this idea, this understanding of how God is interacting with our lives is that sometimes in just spending time asking questions, they can at least catch a little bit of the fact that 
I'm focused on them and I care about them. And even if I'm not able to do what I want to do with the situation, at least I get to catch a little bit of hopefully how God loves us and how he's involved in our lives. And um, some of you guys may be better than I am at, at re getting to the point and reaching uh, your kids. Some of you guys may not be married and maybe you want to apply it to your co-workers and, and your life at work. What would it be like if my co-workers were as familiar to me inserting conversations about Jesus into everyday life as my kids are? What would that look like if my, my co-workers just totally were used to me talking about Jesus in everyday conversation? I think that would be certainly something that Jesus would consider worship. Something that says, He is the Lord of my life, and in everyday, ordinary things, I recognize that He is there, and He is in authority over me. And so that's something to think about and apply some of the little lessons that we've tried to capture to how it fits in with your life and the people around you. And at the very essence of it, I think it just always comes back to how can I point in this situation that I'm experiencing, how can I point to the fact that Jesus is the King of my life? What does the Bible say about what's going on right now in my life? What would Jesus do if he were in my shoes? And so, take your situations and the people who are around you and see if you can point to Jesus. That Jesus is King in your life. And I think that is worship. Yeah. Let's close our eyes. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of us. Slam on